to the reception for Wes and Jane. This is for their past and for their continuing service. To be clear, it's not a retirement party. <laughs> it is a thank you for your years of coffee and for your uh, years of, of, um, of service to each of us individually that none of us really know about. Uh, we can't know all of the things that just Jane and Wes have done over the years. But this is our chance to thank you. We also want to mention uh, to be sure that you see there we have pictures of Wes and Jane what we could collect there's a lot more over there there is an equal exchange table and the book that was given is right over there to look at the beverage is coffee water tea and hot chocolate the, the cards are here to look at and to write your note to Wes and Jane and put in the memory box. And um, I don't think that any of you have probably noticed, but there is a cake and fruit <laughs> here. <laughs> and so there is going to be a song, and then we will begin the, the, the roughest party. Be sure to have a chance to see all the people and to, say, and to speak to Wes. There will be a few uh, statements after, um, in a few minutes. I, but first we'll sing. Janie? Uh-huh. Can you hand the mic off? Oh. I've got to give it away. Well, how many know the the hymn Holy, Holy, Holy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 I hope so. Um, he Jane and her friends. 
so sorry. So, so all this talk about equal exchange, this is modern stuff. I want to take you back a lot earlier than that. Oh, be careful, be careful. In, in 1985, Wes Hare ran for mayor of Chapel Hill. Yeah. He, he finished third in the field six. His, his, con, his um, campaign focused on Central America. You may recall at that time we were supporting a bunch of small town dictators, pouring in arms, trying to put down more or less democratic uprisings. Right? And Wes called that out. So there was a slogan at the time. Um, what was it? Uh, think globally, act locally. And uh, West Hill embodied that. Said so the next year, in 1986, I, I was mostly going to this church, elected to the Orange County Commission, and my the incumbent commissioners were really worried. They, they asked me what kind of behavior they should expect. And, and I said, well, I'm an activist. You, you know I'm from the Church of Reconciliation. And, and they said, yeah, but are you like Norm Gustavuson or are you like West Hay? <laughs> so, so, of course, I, I said that I loved them both. Norm, Norm Gustavuson sat with me three whole days by his wood stove working through every page of the county budget. Right? For, for a naive candidate, it was invaluable. The time with Wes was totally different. <laughs> Wes, Wes rented a school bus, and we put what supporters we could find into that school bus, and we toured the county. We looked at uh, mobile home parks. We looked at... Um, housing developments, we looked at playgrounds, we looked at schools. We particularly went places where Jaca was active. Jaca, Joint Orange Chatham Community Action. Right? That was a phrase in, in this church at that time. Wes, Wes rented that school bus through Twin Streams. Twin Streams was an organization he'd made. I believe the two the twin streams were government and uh, private um, uh, efforts coming together to focus on our ubiquitous social inequities. So, so Jocka was a phrase that uh, we, we talked about, uh, not in this room, but in that room over there at that time. And uh, then, then the, it was, was it 87 or 88 that you first went to Central America? Right, real quick, right? Four, I think. Well, you got us hooked up with Bard. That was the other thing. We talked about Bard, the Belize Agency for Rural Development. And while they were down there, I mean, there were three of them from this church. They went off to Doublehead Cabbage. That was at the village. We, we talked about Bard, and we talked about Doublehead Cabbage, and soon... We built a high school. We helped to build a high school in the community doublehead cabin. And that led to three elementary schools we worked with and a clinic. At that time, you know, Belize was just overrun by immigrants from the war-stricken neighboring countries. And this church had a big presence there. It came out of West, and it came out of Bill Peck. And uh, between the two of them, more than 200 people of this country. So, so the next big thing was MCC. And I, I think it might have been Jane that led them off to San Antonio. <laughs> that, that was 1989, that's what you just said to me. And, and there they're working with refugees, basically, from tell, Central America. Tell them what MCC Mm -hmm. Tell them what MCC is. Oh, MCC. It's the Mennonite Central Committee. I'm sorry. Um, you, you know, the church has a long history with the Mennonite Central Committee. Um, Dan and Jill Herman, um, a 
Harvey and Nancy Harmon, uh, Karen Eby, um, all these people were long-term volunteers. Uh, we thought of the Mennonite Central Committee as being our uh, mission branch, a more activist and um, uh, tightly focused thing than the Presbyterian uh, mission. So, so uh, I, I was surprised at how long the Mennonite Central Committee thing lasted well into the 90s. And um, in, in Virginia then, after San Antonio, I, I thought that the true miracle in, in this was not that they went to San Antonio, but that with all the possibilities are for getting in trouble in Texas, that, that she brought him back safe and sound. <laughs> So for, for all those years, you were our leaders and uh, our goads, our conscience, and uh, we, we're grateful for you. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, John. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's when I met Wes and, I, and, and Jane. Um, when I came to Church of Reconciliation, the church was a buzz because the hairs were coming back. The hairs were coming back. <laughs> so I said, well, they can't be all that great. <laughs> but they were. <laughs> now, um, uh, the other person who would like to speak is Mark. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> no lies now, no lies. And I think his, his partner's coming up with you know, when word got to our residence that there was going to be this big party for Mr. Hare and Ms. Hare. There were two residents at our address. I got really excited. <laughs> and then we had to break the news to them that it was that other Mr. and Ms. Hare <laughs> that the party was for. So, well, we had a little moping and a little pouting, and then we decided, you know what? We were going to make an acrostic poem for Mr. and Ms. Hare. And so we started, didn't we, with the letter H. That's right, we started with the letter H. When the name is Hare, the letter H stands for hopeful. <laughs> hopeful. In the 24 years or so that I have known Wes and Jane Hare, I think we've had a, a few things go awry in this world. We've had 9-11, and we've had, you know, Afghanistan, and Iraq, and Iran, and we've had Yemen, and we've had war in Uganda, and we've had, well, we could go on and on, most recently Ukraine, but I have never had a conversation with Wes and Jane here that didn't end with Wes saying, well, I'm hopeful, <laughs> or Jane saying, well, we have hope. And so when it comes to the letter H in the name here, it's all about hope. Right. Next, we come to the letter A. We had fun with that one, didn't we, Mr. Hare and Ms. Hare? Yeah? Yeah, it was lots and lots of fun because hares like to be really active. <laughs> and the word starting with the letter A for the hares it is active. Yeah. <laughs> now, do the hairs study? Do they read? Do they learn? Do they discuss? Do they cogitate? Do they ruminate? Yes, 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 yes! <laughs> but, is that ever an excuse to sit on the sidelines? No, 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 no. They take action. Mark's in mind. <laughs> best ethics professor in ministerial education said, do you want to know what the problem with the church is? 
And of course, we were all eager seminarians, so we went, sure. The problem with the church is they think that if they've talked about a problem, they've done something about it. We kept that information, and we found it to be most lived out in the life of Wes and Jane Hare. Now, moving right along, we got to the letter R. The letter R, when it comes to Wes and Jane Hare, has got to stand for relentless. <laughs> relentless. Very few people know what it takes to register a young adult to be a conscientious objector to war with the federal government. When our oldest son, Zachary, wanted to become a CO, most people were clueless, including me, from a military family. But it was Wes and Jane Hare, and Janie and Barry Freeman, and Liz Evans, and a few others who relentlessly, constantly checked in on us, had our backs, lifted us up, undergirded us, until we did indeed register our oldest son as a conscientious objector to war. Your willingness to relentlessly, relentlessly, push us and hold us in that direction, meant that eight years later, when it was Jonah's turn to make this decision, Zachary could hold that space for him. And Jonah, in turn, has held the space for conscientious objection with young people who don't know how to spell Presbyterian, <laughs> let alone pronounce it. I have never said to you, but let me say to you right now that the work of helping a teenager resist war is a work beautiful enough to hang on the walls of eternity. Because it says to him that someone besides his mother and father, someone from his faith community, says, that he does not have to be cannon fodder, and that his destiny is bigger than going to foreign countries and killing people. Thank you for that work that will hang on the walls of eternity. Right? Right? Amen. Yay! Last of all, you got the letter E in the name Hater. Now, once again, Mr. Ms. Hare had so much fun with this one because, as you know, hairs have a lot of energy. <laughs> and the letter E for Wes and Jane Hare is about endless energy. In knowing somebody, as we have, for almost a quarter of a century, we've seen each other in top form. <laughs> we've also seen each other weak and sick and caring for the frail. You see a lot in that space of time. But never, ever did you cease to have energy for the poor, the oppressed, society's most vulnerable, and to hold out hope for a world without war. It's like that the time in a relay race. You just kept carrying it. You just kept carrying it. And when you had to sit it aside for a minute and rest, you helped other people carry it on. Mr. Hare, Ms. Hare, carry it on. What? Well, do you want me to ask? <laughs> Mr. and Ms. Hare, would like to know if it's all right with everyone in this room. Can we have a thunderous round 
here with you. Um, this is um, really amazing and wonderful. Um, Wes and Jane, in my, uh, my, my way, I, I wrote it all down. Uh, it, it's all here. Uh, and I'm probably not going to rely on it that much after all the wonderful sharing that's been done. I can't match the wit and wisdom of Mr. and Mrs. Hare. <laughs> but the, the motto for the Davidson clan is sapienter si sinceri, meaning wisely if sincerely. So what I offer is um, some sincere reflections from my heart to these two wonderful people. One of my favorite memories of Wes and Jane was from the early 2000s, soon after we got here from Texas. Several of us traveled down east to visit the migrant worker camps. Do you remember that? I do. Our workers there live in crowded, squalid conditions, roach-infested, unair-conditioned shacks, really very poorly provided for by their employers. Their wages were low, their working conditions were dangerous, and so we set to work. The Justice and Peace Committee sent money to the National Farm Worker Ministry. We hosted, did anybody remember this, Baldemar Velasquez, the farm workers' charismatic leader, to our pulpit. He gave us a fiery sermon and sang us beautiful ballads accompanied by his guitar. Rec members joined the Mount Olive Pickle Boycott. All right. Even people who didn't like pickles very much were not them. <laughs> the Rec session got an overture supporting the boycott through the Presbytery and REC members picketed grocery chains in Chapel Hill and Durham. After a year or more, and steady pressure came coming from many different quarters, the boycott finally led to a three-way agreement between the company, the growers, and the farm workers union. Wow. It raised the wages of the farm workers and improved their living and working conditions. It was an example of what John Lewis called good and necessary trouble, and it would be no surprise to anyone that Wes and Jane were right in the middle of that. As important as that is, the specific memory I wanted to share with you is not that, but something much less visible, and I'm not even sure that most of you even knew about. But it speaks volumes about who Wes and Jane are and how they live their lives. The National Farm Workers Ministry put out a call that a group of men wanted to go to the ocean for their day off. It was something they could only dream of. Dream of. They had no transportation, they didn't know where to go, they had no money for gas. And were there any volunteers anywhere willing to take a group of farm workers on an adventure to the coast? Wes and Jane stepped up to give these men a carefree day to frolic in the ocean a few moments of joy in the midst of a very difficult, hard scrabble life that they live. And how much like Wes and Jane was to quietly, humbly, just share this amazing gift with these guys. This beautiful act of kindness was one of thousands of similar acts in their lives. I mention it to remind us that Christ's command to love our neighbors as ourselves inevitably thrusts us into the messy world of politics and pickets and boycotts. 
Loving our neighbors means challenging the conditions and structures that stunt their lives and, and impose unnecessary hardships. And it is a sacred responsibility. But here's the thing I don't want any of us to miss. At the heart of this sacred responsibility is something very spiritual and holy. Being vessels of God's love and justice empathizing and caring and putting ourselves as best we can into the lives of other people, looking at life from their standpoint, being a person and a force to lift up the downtrodden, being vessels of God's love. And you might remember these words, to strengthen the faint-hearted, to support the weak, and to help the suffering. <laughs> Keep it going, all right? <laughs> because of all this and so much more, we can be fully confident the Spirit of God uses our acts of love and justice to tend for the most vulnerable among us, to mend their hearts, to improve their lives. And this is how the beloved community is built. Vessels of God's love and justice, instruments of God's peace, that's what Wes and Jane are to me. And I'll just close with, with this brief reflection. When I first started out in ministry over 45 years ago, a wise mentor said to me, Mark, find the deeply faithful people in your congregation. Stand in front of them and let them nudge you forward. And I just want to say how fortunate and blessed I was to have the wise hands of Wes and Jane on my shoulders nudging me forward. And how fortunate and blessed all of you are to have these beloved mentors, Wes and Jane Hare, to nudge you forward. The very best tribute we can possibly give to these lovely people is to follow their example. Right, yeah. Amen. Amen. I guess I was telling Libby one of my stories about being with Jane and Wes, and so they wanted me to share it with all of you. Well, first of all, when I came back from Mexico in 1985, I didn't find many like souls. And then I came upon these two, and they've been like beacons of hope to me through all these years. And if I would go to a demonstration or a rally or whatever it was, and the first thing I do is see, are Jane and Wes there? Because if Jane and Wes there, then I'm in the right place. <laughs> and they were, and then when we went to Raleigh uh, for Moral Monday, and George and I went with the intention of getting arrested, uh, I looked around, and there they were. And I thought, it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be fine. And then Jane and I were chained up together in the women's part of the prison for a while, and that was always great to be chained up with Jane if I had to be chained up with <laughs> So uh, that's what they've been to me. But the story I wanted to tell was about them in San Antonio. Because as you've all heard, West and Jane have had a lot of love and caring for people from Central America and in this camp, and this, uh, from Mexico. So anyway, I hated to see them leave, but they went. We all hated to see them leave. And um, sometimes Wes would call me because of the Mexican culture. And he would ask me questions. Well, what about this? What about that? I mean, it was kind of a different, completely different world that he was put into. And so um, I was fascinated with their life. I'd like to have led it myself. But anyway, in 1991, I went to San Antonio with my daughter Tanya because she wanted to see well, she wanted to see the University of Texas and, what's the name of that school? Okay. Trinity, Trinity, which is in San Antonio. So I got a hold of Wes and Jade and I said, um, coming down to San Antonio, you think we could have lunch? And we had a lot more than lunch. I got to stay with them 
in their house and hear, meet many of the people they were working with, see what they were doing. Uh, it was a very a special, special event. And many people would not have enjoyed what their work was. I mean, it wasn't easy. They were living in not the greatest of conditions. They had the language barriers. They had a lot of cultural things. But these two just went on and, and did so much. And my favorite thing that they did, is, you remember this, was with the Piñata Cooperative. So they were looking for something to help women um, and something economic that women could win, could, uh, work and win an income from. So they decided, I don't know which one of them, that there should be a Piñata. Uh, cooperative where the women would make piñatas and sell them. Oh, I got my mask on. Don't I? Sell them to all their friends. So they, I'm sure they looked at the market and they figured out if it would work or not. And then they had to convince the women that it was worthwhile. And, and the women they, came up with the idea. Oh, I thought you all did. The women came up with the idea. Anyway, there was a great idea, and so they had all these uh, women who were able to make. Uh, and I think you had part of that, of setting it all up, oh, yeah. and make the piñatas and then sell them. Yeah. And I just thought it was a wonderful story of the kind of people that they are, and the creative ideas they've always come up with for all of us, and what they have meant to me in all these years of being part of their journey. And I thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, unless somebody has something burning to say, uh, you're all free to get up and move around the cabin. <laughs> and help yourself to the cake. The rectangular cake is gluten free. Dairy -free. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 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 <laughs>